Greetings dear friends, Dragon here once again. If it's your first time stumbling onto my little corner of the YouTubes, then do please consider clicking that red button and subscribing. Today getting into a review of disc two of the upcoming Arrow Shaw Scope Volume 1 box set. This is Chang Che's Spectacular, the boxer from Shang Tung from 1972. Another disc with just one movie on it. And our next instalment, Disc 3, is going to have two films, again by Chang Che. But for today, we're all about the boxer from Shang Tung. Like I say, made in 1972, its Chinese title is Ma Zhong Zhen, which is literally just the name that its main title star plays in the film. And the leading actor in this is the wonderful Cheng Quan Tei. And this kind of bills him as as introducing Chen Quan Tei in the opening titles. Wasn't the first film he did for Shaw's, but certainly the first one that he took uh, the main leading role in. Um, I think he had a tiny blink and you'll miss him cameo in The Chinese Boxer, which we just covered yesterday. You'll see him working in the casino if you look very closely in the background. But yeah, this is his first film really stepping up as being leading man and what a leading man he makes. He's pretty charismatic. Um, and this being a Chang Chen movie, very much concerned with honour and brotherhood and a shit ton of blood. This is a very, very, very bloody movie. I believe it was pretty heavily edited when it was released in the States originally. The version that we're getting here is the full uncut version. So it runs for two hours and 14 minutes but flies by pretty quickly. It's a very simple story. I'm going to try and not spoil it for you, though it's a, like I say, a pretty simple, very easy to follow narrative. Kind of a rags to riches to ruin story, really. Uh, a penniless man comes to Shanghai to find his fortune and very quickly meets a, a friend uh, who is played by uh, Chen Kang Ye when they're both staying at a hostel. He's playing a character called Zhao Jing Mi. And the two of them essentially kind of start off on their route to try and uh, work their way up in the world and uh, which as is often the case in Chang Chi movies is on the wrong side of the law so they, they ultimately kind of move into becoming kind of low-level gangsters um, a chance opportunity um, to fight against a a Russian strongman quite early on in the film is kind of one of the first big wins for Chen Quente and that's the point where he first gets a little bit of cash in his pocket and kind of starts to get a name for himself he encounters a pretty charismatic boss of one of those two kind of main bosses controlling the area that they've moved into. Uh, one friendly, one not so. Uh, the friendly boss played by David Cheng. He's playing boss Tan Si and he encounters our, our hero pretty early on and our hero's quite uh, besotted with his way of life. Is kind of looking up to him but wants to get to an equal point. So he, there's a chance for him to make some money from David Cheng. He turns that down because he kind of wants to find his own way in the world, which uh, David Cheng respects. Um, and the two of them will cross paths, but not ever come to blows. So there's a kind of friendship that's, that's skirting. Um, they don't really spend that much screen time together. They just kind of pass by each other at various points on Chen Quan Tai's ascent to um, more and more power in the area. So after his success, um, really fighting against the Russian strongman, which he wins. That's a pretty spectacular fight sequence, leading to a huge brawl after the fact, because that fight has been organised by the other main boss in the area, the more nasty boss. Uh, boss Yang, played by Cheng Nan, who's got a pretty large score of henchmen and is controlling most of the casinos and the brothels in the area. There's one little narrow lane that is less under his control. Um, and he's just sent one of his henchmen to kind of look after it. And that's the the area that uh, Cheng Quan Tai sets his sights on first. So he kind of moves in and really comes to blows for the first time with uh, with probably the main henchman we, we see most of the time through the film, uh, played by Ku Feng. He's playing a character called Cheng Ching Fa. And they butt heads, and ultimately, uh, when it looks very much like Cheng Quan Tai's men are going to have the upper hand, uh, Boss Yang pulls his men back, decides that he's going to let them take control to kind of lure them into a false sense of security before ultimately trying to take down the other boss, uh, Boss Tan Si. And as the film progresses, really, it becomes a little bit of a power struggle between our two existing bosses and then in the middle of all this Chen Quintai's character rising up and getting more and more power and starting to enjoy the benefits of having a little bit more cash. Uh, there is a love interest in the film uh, played by Ching Li. She actually has top billing uh, over Chen Quintai. She was the bigger star at Shaw's at the time though she's really not in it that much and their their love goes largely unrequited. As soon as she gets a sense of his um, increasing power, um, I think that's a little bit of a turn off for her, so she has less and less to do with them. So if you want to see more of Ching Li's films, I would highly recommend The Web of Death, which she has pretty much the main starring role in. Um, that's a bonkers, insane, mad movie. I did have a review for up this before, um, before the channel was taken down. If I can find my old review, I will stick it up because it's well worth a watch. But it's a story for a different day. So yeah, uh, we see Ching Li in passing. Um, she's playing a, a nightclub singer who kind of comes into some of the places where our various gangs are hanging out. 
but like I say, it's just in it, literally fleetingly. She's not really that big of a part. Um, our main characters really are Chen Quen Tai, David Cheng, and Boss Yang and his men, of which there are so many, more than I can mention. I could spend the entire rest of the video just talking about the amount of, of kind of Hong Kong stuntmen working as extras. If you look closely, you'll, pop, you'll spot Philip Ko uh, from 8 Diagram Pole Fighter and a host of other things, and a very young Yun Wu Ping as there as a um, kind of background supporting henchman. Some of the big brawls in this are, are incredible in terms of it's uh, more people fighting one person than I think I've ever seen on screen in the Shaw Brothers movie. So it's not uncommon for, for Chen Quan Tai to be going up against 20, 30, 40, possibly 50 guys at one point in one particularly memorable sequence. Most of these guys wield axes, kind of gives you a little bit of future flash forwards towards Kung Fu Hustle and the Axe Gang in that. And the gang seem to be colour delineated. So um, some of them are dressed in kind of dark colours, they carry uh, axes, some of them are coloured in light colours, they carry knives, but they're all ultimately Boss Yang's men. Seems to be a division of which strong men he has. But yeah, as the film progresses, really the, there is spectacular large-scale action sequence after spectacular large-scale action sequence. So we see a big huge one after the fight against the, the Russian strongman. He's been played by Mario Maleno. Um, and we see ultimately a, a couple of bigger ones towards the end reel of the film and then the last 20-25 minutes of the movie is an enormous brawl really mostly one on many uh, with Chen Quan Tai attempting to try and take down Boss Yang. That's about as much as I'll say for the storyline. Choreography in the film is fantastic and it's all handled by Lau Ka Lung when he was still working quite happily alongside Chang Che and it helps out his brother uh, by Lau Ka Wing and so the, the shapes that are thrown are a little bit more on point than we saw in yesterday's review of the Chinese boxer. So it's a little bit more structured, but still has very much a street brawly kind of feel to it. It's less um, kind of strict forms and more rougher in the edges. Um, and there's a lot of weapons. So most of the, the henchmen are all carrying knives or axes. So it's a lot of trying to go up against people who are armed when you're not armed. Um, occasionally Chen Quan Tai will get a hold of a weapon, but not often. For the most part, he's usually having to deal with these people open hand which he does so with his iron fists, not iron palms, as we saw in Chinese Boxer. But yeah, fantastic. Really, really, really kind of well put together. Not quite as inventive um, in terms of cinematography as we've seen in some of the other movies we've been covering over the last couple of days, but no less watchable. Um, the assistant director is well worth mentioning here because this was John Wu um, when he was working under Chang Che, and you can see that this has been a pretty big inspiration on him, um, the heroic bloodshed genre that John Wu would kind of pioneer 20 years after this. Um, you can see the birth of it a lot here. So you can see the kind of the friendship between between brothers and you can kind of certainly see that kind of honour amongst thieves vibe that he would certainly have in A Better Tomorrow too, and to a certain extent in The Killer. Um, it's pretty spectacular to kind of see an awful lot of the stuff that Chang Che would routinely use that John Wu's kind of refined and would turn into kind of his um, his own interpretation of it in years to follow. So yeah, fantastic really as a, as a film. I maybe actually kind of put it on a par with King Boxer. It's a very different type of movie. Um, the first film that we had on disc one or disc A, uh, it's a different sort of experience uh, and it's certainly a lot more bloody overall. Uh, you will see um, the beginning of Chang Che's very much beloved somebody getting stabbed in the gut and then continuing to fight for an improbably long period of time whilst being stabbed in the gut. All that sort of goodness is on display here. Um, I don't want to spoil what happens in the last reel, but it's well worth it's well worth the experience. If you haven't seen the movie, you're going to particularly love that last act because it's pretty spectacular. It kind of still holds up today and still quite shocking, really. Um, not so much for the blood because that in Shaw Brothers movies always looks incredibly fake, but really just for the spectacle of what they put together, the staging of a large scale action sequence. We would see uh, the choreographer Lau Gar Lung revisit this of sorts in Drunken Master 2 and they, they have the tea house fight. Uh, with Jackie going up against a whole bunch of people axes in, in that movie too. And there's some sort of like parallels with a couple of things that happen, but you can see Lau Garun wanting to refine a little bit what he, he started off back here. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, my uh, my favourite villain of note, Fung Har Khan, makes a very fleeting appearance. Um, quite a young Fung Har Khan. Took a little second to, to kind of recognise him because he's got a bit more puppy fat than we would see in some of the Samuel Hung movies that he would make later on in the 70s. But it's great to see him. He's always... 
a great, fantastic kind of villain, even when he's playing a low-level henchman. It's kind of great to see him. And I think that's the main cast that I've written down to mention to you all. Let's talk a little bit more about the actual disc and the extra features, because I'm sure that's what most of you will be here to check out. So the, the film itself looks fantastic. This is a brand new 2K restoration by Arrow from a 4K scan of the original negative. And like I say, it is uncut, which many of you, particularly my friends in the States, may not have seen. I think the old Celestial DVD, this one, was uncut. So if you had a chance to track down that version of it, you've probably seen the full unedited version of the film um, and it looks fantastic here really the colors are very vibrant it looks sharp it looks crisp an awful lot of the film was filmed at night but you wouldn't spot it from the the way that it looks it's been lit really really well and staged really well a lot of the, the night scenes were all in two years so it's not really that big a thing that they've shot it at night but yeah it holds together really well looks consistent all the way through uh, one of my favorite of their prints that we've got to so far i know we're only two discs in we'll see how the other ones progress as we move further through the set but yeah it looks absolutely fantastic extra features are maybe not quite as loaded as we saw in king boxer but they are um, they're still really really watchable and really good and they do mount up so there's probably just a bit over hour and change uh, we get first and foremost we get an interview with chen quan tai um, who's sitting behind, alongside an act, another actor called vincent c this is from 2007 runs for about 23 minutes uh, a separate standalone interview with David Cheng uh, from 2003, one's for about 32 minutes. Um, an interview with John Wu, which is a treat. Uh, it's only about eight minutes long, but he crams an awful lot into his eight minutes. Um, it was really interesting hearing him speak about his experiences and, and certainly acknowledging how much of an impact this had on his own work. And we get a conversation between Chen Quan Tai and Ko Feng, which although it's only 14 minutes, was my favourite extra on the set. It's very sweet. Um, they're clearly pretty dear friends. Call each other Sifu. It's kind of cool. At the time when they made the movie, uh, Ku Feng was a more experienced actor, Chen Quan Tai was a more experienced fighter, so they basically taught each other on the set of this movie. Um, this wasn't uh, the only time they would work together, and uh, they reference um, working on Killer Constable together, which is um, already out, and if you can track it down, came out through 88 films and is a fantastic movie, and they're both in that too. Um, but yeah, they, um, they're they very, very good natured together and very sweet together. It's not really an interview as such, it's just a conversation between the two of them. That was filmed in 2007 at the Shaw Brothers reunion. All four of these interviews have come from the Frederica Brzezine archives. He's providing a huge amount of content for the Arrow set and it's all just gold. Um, I'd love the chance to pick his brains about how he's been able to actually get in touch with all these people and track them all down. I don't know if he's based in Hong Kong, but incredible access to really a wealth of, of really fantastic stars and has caught them really at great time. So some of these interviews are, are maybe, what, 15, 16 years old now. So you're getting them when they're still pretty vibrant. At the time uh, of filming the Chen Quan Tai interviews, he probably would have been in his early 60s, but still looks really fresh and really vibrant. He's still full of life and full of some great stories. So all four of the, the little interview clips are on here are highly watchable. We also get alternate opening credits. We get Trailer Gallery, which has four trailers in it. The Hong Kong theatrical trailer, the German theatrical trailer, a US TV spot and the digital reissue trailer. And then an image gallery, and the image galleries are fast becoming one of my really unexpected favourite features. Normally image galleries on DVDs were, were pretty unmemorable, but these have been fantastic, really well put together. There's 36 images in this one, and it's a fantastic mix of stills from the film, original lobby cards from both Hong Kong and Germany, and posters from various different releases around the world, theatrical and on physical media and cover art from the Celestial DVD, that sort of stuff. So yeah, 36 images runs along. If I was really being super picky, um, it would have been fantastic to see, there is a documentary called Fists of Fire from the 1970s that the BBC made, um, really kind of focusing in pretty hard on Shaw Brothers and specifically on David Cheng, that I feel would have been a great addition to this particular set, given that we get David Cheng on here. I don't think David Cheng's on any of the other movies that are on the box set. Um, it's quite a long documentary, but unfortunately, I don't know if it's a rights issue. I don't know who holds the rights for that. I think it was originally a BBC production, but fear not, it's up on YouTube. And so I will pop a link down to that below. So if anyone wants to get an extra little bit of insight into David Cheng in the 70s and what it was like working at Shaw's in that period, do please watch that link down below. Really good. Check it out, please. Good. And that is pretty much it as far as the boxer from shang Tung goes so yeah um really they're still continuing to knock out the park um i enjoyed this every bit as much as i did the king boxer i know that the best for me is still yet to come on the set this is not the last time that we're going to be talking about chen quen tai uh, in a couple of discs time we'll be getting on to uh challenge of the masters and executioners from shaolin two spectacular lao ga lung movies that chen quen tai is in both Fantastic, can't wait to get into those. And for the Venom Mob fans amongst you, we will also be getting into Crippled Avengers, of which he is really kind of the villain in that movie. He is the one that cripples those Avengers. Fantastic. So yeah, all of those 
good exciting things to come for anyone else looking to track down more of this stuff that's maybe already out there then you can get the flying guillotine also in 88 films uh, which he's the main actor in and he's got a very fleeting small cameo in Lau Garlung's directorial debut the spiritual boxer in the opening um, sequences of that movie stuff that's on other physical media um track down the master if you can which is really more of a um a yun tak film but it's fantastic it's good fun and he plays the titular master in that movie um also worth pointing out at this stage, there was a remake of this called Hero, directed by Corey Yoon in 1997, one of the last films that Shaw Brothers made as a studio. Not the last, they would go on to kind of do stuff in the early 2000s, not, most notably Drunken Monkey. Hero was from 1997, uh, stars uh, Takeshi Kaneshiro is the, in the main role, uh, the part that Chen Quan Tai plays in this one, and has Yoon Bao, uh, Yoon Tak and Yoon Hua in supporting roles. And that comes out twice next year, um, both from Spectrum Films, who've already teased out the cover art, and from 88 Films, and um, we're not too sure what their cover art will be for that, but I'm certainly hoping that we get a Kung Fu Bob O'Brien cover for that. Two thumbs way up for the boxer from Shang Tung, I would say eight and a half out of ten for the movie, uh, maybe seven and a half for the extras, because they set the bar so high on King Boxer with its five hours of extra features, this one wasn't going to be able to quite get to those dizzying heights, but some of the extra features on that first disc do translate to this, um, specifically Tony Rayans when he's doing his kind of overview Shaw Brothers does specifically mention the boxer from Shang Tun. So I kind of think of that as being a little bit of a, um, a special feature that spans both disc A and both and disc B because he speaks about King Boxer and the boxer from Shang Tun probably equally in that little kind of wee interview. Thank you very much for watching. Check back in again for another review. Hopefully we're getting into the Disciples of Shaolin, 88 films, their upcoming Shaw Brothers release. But thank you very much for joining me today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm cutting this short because I'm going to go and see Raging Fire. Speak to you soon.